Atlanta Kids online family experience. God has something great in store for you and your family, and we are thankful that you get to experience it together. So keep watching and learning.
let's look all around. Do you see the blue car anywhere? Oh, there is my blue car. Great hunting! Now let's look for the blue cup. We'll look left. Hunting makes me thirsty. Who? Who? It's Ollie! Hello, Zoe. Who? Who? Going on a scavenger hunt, are you? Hi, Ollie. I sure am. I only have one blue thing left to find on my list. Blue is a beautiful color. It's true. I know someone who made all the things that are blue. Listen to this story. Just follow me through. Who? Who? Follow me through. Follow me through. Who? I've got a Bible story for me and you. <sighs> oh, hi, everyone. I'm Justin the Mailman. Wow, what a beautiful day. I woke up this morning and did a big stretch. And I said, hello, day. Can you do a big good morning stretch and say that with me? <sighs> Hello, day. Great job. That reminds me of a true story from the Bible about when God made everything in the whole world. Do you want to hear it? Great. Let me just put the story mail in the mailbox. In the very, very beginning, there was nothing, no people, no animals, no land, no ocean, no sun, no earth, just nothing. But there was God, and God was about to do something amazing. Are you ready for this? On the first day, God said, let there be light. And there was light, amazing, bright, shining light. And God said, that's good. Everyone say, that's good with me. That's good. And it was. Then God decided to separate the light from the darkness. He called the light day. And what do you think he called the dark? Night, that's right. And because on day one, God made the light and the dark, we now get to wake up every morning and see the light. And every night, we get to go to sleep in the dark. That was day one of God making the world. Now, what comes after one? Two, that's right. On day two, God made water and put some way down low and put the sky way up high. Then God saw what he had made and God said, that's good. Everyone say that's good with me. That's good. Okay, so on day one, God made light and dark. And on day two, God made the sky above the water. Day one, light and dark. Day two, sky over water. And this was just the beginning. God making the light, the dark, the sky, the water. He had so many more plans of what to make next because God made everything. Oh, hey there, Ollie. Tell me, who made everything? God made everything. Yes, it's true. Now let's hear it from you. Tell me, who made everything? God made everything. That's the truth, friends. You better believe it. Bye. So there's your story, and it's all true. God made light and dark and sky over water, and he did it all on day one and day two. Thanks, Ollie. Goodbye to you. Who? 
Oh. Wow, God made light and dark and the sky and all of the water in the world. God made everything. I think I got the story. Did you get it? If you did, say got it. Get it? Got it! Good. Water is blue, just like the things on our list. We only have one thing left, the blue book. Shout if you see it. The blue book is our Bible. I'm gonna go read all about how God made water. I'll see you next time. And it was very good. Genesis 131. God saw everything he had made. And it was very good. Genesis 131. What gets you down? Maybe it's getting benched for most of your soccer match, or a bad grade on that test you studied so hard for. It might be a fight with your best friend. Yeah, well you're one too. Or when you find out your family can't take a trip to the beach this summer. Maybe it gets you down when everyone else wins a gazillion end of school awards, and you get none. We all get knocked down sometimes, and it's tempting to just stay there. After all, Getting up is risky. There are no guarantees you won't fall down again. But God promises you don't have to do this alone. He's right there to take your hand and help you up. He's ready to walk beside you. He's gonna lead you. And if you do get knocked flat again, God still loves you. He still has an amazing story for you to tell. And he'll give you strength to start again. When you get right back up after something gets you down, others can see God at work in you. That's why choosing resilience is an amazing way to worship God with your life. Because worship is about more than just singing loud. It's all about living loud. gets hard. That doesn't mean we should give up. When the going gets tough and I want to give up, I will trust in you. Cause you're always gonna lead, always gonna lead, always gonna lead me through. When I'm feeling overwhelmed and almost want to quit, I will not give in. Cause you're giving me strength, giving me strength, the strength to start again.
Hey everybody! My name is Erica. Have you ever been on an obstacle course? It's like a maze of challenges designed to help you jump higher, think faster, and get stronger. But to get to the end of the obstacle course, you've got to have resilience. Resilience is getting back up when something gets you down. So if you happen to get knocked over, it, oh, it doesn't have to be the end of the race. You can get back up and keep going. Every obstacle course is different, but you'll probably need to know how to climb. You'll need balance. You'll need to know how to get through the tight spots. And when an obstacle gives you trouble, you'll need to learn how to bounce back. There's a good chance you're going to face some obstacles in your life. In fact, sometimes life itself can feel like an obstacle course. But as you'll learn in today's story, you won't have to tackle these obstacles all on your own. So when you do get knocked over, oh, okay, who is doing that? I'll see you in a bit. <laughs> but seriously, who was doing it? The Bible. It's 66 books of history, stories, letters, and poetry that fit together to form God's one big story. The epic adventure of how He created us and loves us so much that He made a way to rescue us. As we travel through the Bible, from Genesis to Revelation, we discover people who met God and found their lives changed forever. Now, for an amazing story, inspired by the book of Matthew, chapter 28, and the book of Acts, chapters 1 and 2. Imagine that you are one of Jesus' closest friends, and three years ago, he invited you, you, to join him. Come, follow me. For three years, you followed Jesus from village to city to countryside as he teaches. You are the light of the world encourages. Blessed are those who are sad. They will be comforted. And heals. Get up, take your mat and go home. You know that Jesus is no ordinary rabbi. He's been sent by God. You are the Messiah. You are the son of the living God. Soon, you think Jesus will reveal who he really is to everyone. Maybe he'll even lead a revolt against the Romans. With Jesus in charge, anything could happen. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord! But then, during the Passover week, things get dark. The rumbling threats from the religious leaders become real. One of Jesus' followers, Judas, betrays him to the leaders for a handful of silver. Jesus is arrested. He's given a fake trial, sentenced to death, nailed to a rough wooden cross, and then, he dies. It's the darkest moment ever. It feels as if all the air has been slammed from your body. You don't know how to take another breath. You have no idea how you'll ever get back up. That's exactly what it was like for Jesus' disciples. His death knocked them flat, and they couldn't imagine how things could ever get better. But even in the darkest, downest moment, God was still present. God was still at work. And at the perfect moment in time, God raised Jesus from the dead. Don't be afraid. Go and tell my brothers to go to Galilee. There they will see me. Over 40 days, Jesus appeared to around 500 of his friends. He walked with them, ate with them, talked with them, at one meal, he told them, Do not leave Jerusalem. Wait for the gift my father promised. In a few days, you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit. At last, Jesus' friends met him in Galilee, where it had all started three years before. Jesus! Peter and Jesus' other followers were so overwhelmed with amazement and joy at his presence that they fell down and worshipped him. Jesus came close and smiled at them. All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. So you must go and make disciples of all nations, 
baptized them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Teach them to obey everything I have commanded you, and you can be sure that I am always with you to the very end. The job Jesus had given his friends seemed impossible, except for one thing. He promised he would be with them, right by their side, forever. He told them, You will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes on you. Then you will tell people about me in Jerusalem, and in all Judea and Samaria, and from one end of the earth to the other. Then, right before the eyes of his friends, Jesus rose up into heaven. They stared, amazed and confused. Men of Galilee, why do you stand here looking at the sky? Jesus has been taken away from you into heaven, but he will come back in the same way you saw him go. How can Jesus be with us when he's gone? What about this Holy Spirit? Jesus' friends were filled with questions. Not only did Jesus expect them to get back up, he'd given them a giant job. He wants us to tell the whole world about him. My head is spinning. Jesus' friends waited for him in Jerusalem, just as he had told them. And within a short time, they discovered how Jesus would give them his power. The Holy Spirit came to rest on their heads like tongues of fire. And as the Spirit filled them, many were able to start speaking and understanding languages they hadn't known before. Wait, you're speaking like an Egyptian. But all I said was, would you like a cookie? In the language of the Egyptian. <gasps> it's the power of God's spirit. We can speak to everyone now. Jerusalem was filled with believing Jews from many nations who had traveled to Jerusalem for the festival of Pentecost. And they spoke many languages. Fellow Israelites, listen to this. Peter addressed the crowd. The other Jesus followers shared his words in every language. Jesus of Nazareth was a man who had God's approval. God did miracles, wonders, and signs among you through Jesus. With the help of evil people, you put Jesus to death. But God raised him from the dead. God has made him both Lord and Messiah. What should we do? Turn away from your sins and be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ. Then your sins will be forgiven. You will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. I'm ready. Me too. Me three. God's Spirit was so powerful in the followers of Jesus that 3,000 people believed in Jesus and were baptized that day. Wow, <laughs> this is really happening. People will try to stop us. The religious leaders hate even the name of Jesus. But whatever happens, Jesus is with us. We can get back up, keep going. That sounds like a bottom line. Through the power of God's Spirit, the early church in Jerusalem grew quickly. The believers shared their lives. They studied and worshipped and ate together. And their fierce joy continued to draw people to Jesus. Though their challenges were just beginning, the believers knew that the power of God's Spirit could carry them through anything. When Jesus was on the earth, he gave his disciples a mission. He told them, go and make disciples of all nations. All nations! That would have seemed like an impossible mission. But Jesus also gave his disciples a promise. He said, you can be sure that I'm always with you to the very end. So the disciples knew they wouldn't have to face their impossible mission alone. Sometimes for you, and me, life can seem impossible. But guess what? God is always with us too. When you're trying really hard to get something done, God is with you. When you feel like every step you take has to be perfect, God is with you. <laughs> when you're worried about school, when something bad happens out of your control, when you don't know what's going to happen next, God is with you. That's the one thing to remember today. God is always with you. That doesn't mean you won't have to face any obstacles, but it does mean that you won't be alone when you do. Ha! Not this time. I got you. <laughs> Resilience. Bounce back. 
That's resilience right there. I'll see you next time. Bring it. Bring it. Oh. all over me. I, I've, I've, I've tried everything. Rinse, rinse. Tell me something. Are you awake? Because you're fighting like he's asleep. I can't stop him. You gotta hit him harder. I am. You gotta knock him down. I have, but every time I knock him down, he just gets back up again. Well, that's what he does. Oh, yeah. He's trying to get in your thinker. Oh, it hurts. Up here. Right. Oh. And in front of the looks of it, he's doing a pretty good job. All right, so what can I do? You gotta go up to him and you gotta look him in his beady right. little eyes. Right, and you gotta right. say to him, not today. Not today. I'm gonna knock you down. And if you get back up, I'm gonna hit you again. Uh, and again. Uh, and again if I have to. Yeah. You gotta walk right up to him and hit him right in the nose and let the whole world know that he's the real clown. Yeah. Now get in there. Go for it. Uh, go, Greg. Bob and Wee. Bob and Wee. Weave and Bob. I'm Brandon. I'm John, and welcome, welcome to, to the So and So Show. Show. John, hey, what does the word resilience mean to you? Uh, oh, well, I guess it means bouncing back. Oh, that's a good way to look at Thank it. Thank you. It's like getting back up when something knocks you down. Right. Well, today. It's picking yourself up and dusting yourself off. Uh huh. Jumping back in when life spits you out, making a molehill out of a mountain, charging in with no strategy and no fear of consequences. Resilience! Not sure I agree with all of that. Yeah, well. Oh! We got airmail. Oh. Oh. <laughs> oh, good. It's here. What? Wait, wait, what's here? Uh, the, the video game I ordered. It, it's called Bouncer. Did you say video game? Video game. Can't wait to play that video game. Video game. It should be fun. Let's play it today. I got it. Ah. <sighs> Brandon, wait. Brandon. Brandon! John? Huh? Down here! Brandon! What are you doing in there? I have no idea. Well, how are we supposed to get you out? How should I know? Uh, you ordered the game. That, that, that doesn't make me an expert. You gotta help me, John. I'm all alone in here. Okay, okay, okay. Let's 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 figure this out. Uh, 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 oh, what is that in the top corner? It's, it looks like a baby kangaroo. Oh, yeah, yeah, I see it. Maybe I'm supposed to get there. Uh, yeah, good plan. Go. I can't move. What? I can't. Mm. Mm. You've got the controls. S see if you can uh, move me. Oh. oh, okay. Uh, here we go. Mm. Oh, this is weird. Oh, is it working? <sighs> yes. Go toward that ladder. Uh, okay, okay. <sighs> Going up. Oh, that way. Oh, no, no, I, I think I'm getting the hang of it. Yeah. <laughs> hey, watch out for that. Oh! Whoa! Oh, oh man! No. Brand is gone! That was a strange sensation. Oh, you're alive, Brandon! What? You think I would give up after one little mistake? No! Let's try again. You're getting the hang of this. Okay, here goes. Keep going. Mm-hmm. Keep going. Up the ladder. And jump! Knowing you're in control, jump! Makes me feel jump! Oh. Less alone. 
jump! Yes! <sighs> I think we're gonna make it. Ah! A giant strawberry just smushed Brandon. It's okay, we've got multiple lives. Oh, okay. Now let's get up there and get that Joey. All right, let's do this. Jump, 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 jump. That way, that way. Ladder, that way, okay. Jump, jump. Ah, uh, yeah, jump. You're doing it. We're doing it. Jump. Climb the ladder. Yeah! <laughs> you did it. Oh, that was amazing. <laughs> oh, that was incredible. You know, the most fun I've ever had playing a video game in my entire life. I could play this game for hours. All right, you want to be the kangaroo now? It's Bible story time with Kelly. Okay. Hey guys. Hey, hey Kellen. Kellen, what do you got for us today? I've got a great story that is gonna hopefully inspire us all to have resilience. Then take it away. A lot of stuff happened to Jesus during his lifetime. He was a teacher, he was a miracle worker, and he had followers that learned from him. Then Jesus was arrested even though he had done nothing wrong. He was put on trial and then put to death. For his followers, everything seemed hopeless until they saw Jesus raised from the dead. And Jesus still had things to teach them. All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. You must go and make disciples of all nations. You can be sure I will always be with you to the very end. Hmm. Oh. Jesus told his followers to make disciples of all nations. He also promised to always be with them. Later, Jesus said, You will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes on you. Then you will tell people about me from one end of the earth to the other. Then right before the eyes of his friends, Jesus rose up into heaven. Wow! Look at him go! He's like a bird or a plane? Wait, 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 wait. Hmm? What are we supposed to do now? He said he was going to be with us. Oh. You may be wondering how Jesus was going to be with them if he had just flown up to heaven. And how are they supposed to tell people about Jesus from one end of the earth to the other? Well, that's where the Holy Spirit comes in. On the day of Pentecost, People from all over the world were gathered in Jerusalem to celebrate. All the Jesus followers were gathered in one place. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so Jesus wants us to tell people about him from one end of the earth to the other. Any ideas? Hmm. Oh, 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 oh. Uh, yes, you. How about a television commercial? Ah, social media. Oh, no, no, no. We should call everybody in the world on a phone. Oh, it's a good idea. <laughs> uh, okay, okay. Uh, none of those things have been invented yet. <laughs> um, does anyone have any first century ideas? Suddenly, they heard a sound from heaven like a strong wind. Is that a vacuum cleaner? Oh, I, no, it's a leaf blower. Uh, not invented. <gasps> Look! They saw something that looked like fire in the shape of tongues that came and rested on each of them. What is happening right now? Uh, just, just go with it. Jesus Christ is with us. Uh, what? They were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in languages that they had never known before. He said Jesus is with us. Oh, I didn't know you know Spanish. Oh, neither did I. <laughs> es increíble. There are all sorts of people who speak all kinds of different languages and they can understand what we're saying. It must be the Holy Spirit. Oh, if this keeps up, then the good news of Jesus will travel from one end of the earth to the other. 
¡Alabado sea Dios! Through the power of the Holy Spirit, Jesus' followers were able to tell the good news to people all over the world without having to travel anywhere. 3,000 people became Jesus' followers in a single day. Even though Jesus had gone up to heaven, he showed his followers that he still was with them. The end. Wow, that's incredible. What a roller coaster. Oh, yeah, totally. J Jesus is there, then he's not, then he's there again. Then he's not. And then he's sending flaming tongues of fire. <laughs> yep. And like those early followers of Jesus, God is with us. Even when things seem impossible or when it feels like you're alone, God is always with us. And that's one reason we can have resilience because we know we're never alone. Hey, thanks for the story, Kellen. You bet. I'll see you guys next time. You know, it's awesome to know that we're never alone, that God is with us no matter what. What are you doing? And then that and then let that tongue with this back into the fire. Okay. <laughs> uh-huh. Uh, reveal the question. <laughs> when have you felt alone? Well, I feel alone when I wake up in the middle of the night and there isn't a sound anywhere in the apartment except for the mysterious creak, creak coming from the bathroom. Creak, creak, John. Hi. Oh, I, I can feel, I can feel alone when I uh, disappoint someone or when I feel overwhelmed. Creak. Stop it. Okay. What about you? When have you felt alone? Yeah, yeah. The key word is felt because you're never really alone. God is with you. Yep. Good show, John. Yeah, too, kangaroo. <laughs> we'll see you next time on the So and So, so show. show. Time for some video games. Woo! <laughs> Select character, kangaroo. Nice, and here we go. Go right. Climb the ladder. Climb the ladder. Run into the back wall. All right, attack mode. No, no, not me. No! No, 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 no! Ow! Ow! Down, down! How did God show us his love? That's right! He sent Jesus! Jesus came to be born, live a perfect life, and then sacrifice that life on a cross so we could be forgiven of our sins. And what is sin? Correct! Sin is anything we think, say, or do that makes God sad, and it separates us from him. God didn't want to stay separated from us though. That's why Jesus died on the cross. If you have never asked Jesus to be the Lord and Savior of your life, you're gonna have the opportunity right now. Just bow your head, close your eyes, and repeat after me. Dear God, I'm a sinner. I've sinned against you. I put my faith in you. I put my trust in you. And I want you to be the Lord and savior of my life. Amen. Congratulations. If you prayed that prayer for the very first time, we know there's a party going on in heaven. And now it's time for small groups. In the links below, we have some amazing resources, including Manikid's Facebook group and Instagram that will allow you and your family to learn more about God together all week long. Okay, I'll see you next week.